Hello friends, today we are gonna create a complete e-commerce application using React, Strapi Headless CMS and Stripe. This is the home page. We will create this beautiful slider without using any library. Here we have some featured products. When I hover over this component, it shows a different image. There are some categories, trending products, and other components. Let's choose any category here. As you can see, it's fetching all these data from our database. And we can filter products using this left menu. I can choose any subcategory. I can sort by price or select a price range. Let's click one of them. And this is the single product page. I can change any image increase or decrease this quantity and I can add it to my cart. As you realize, as soon as I do that, this number increases and the product is in my shopping cart right now. Let's add another product and it's immediately here because we are using Redux Toolkit and it updates the cart state instantly. And also, even if I refresh the page, my products are still here, so you will learn how to persist the state using Redux. I can delete any item, I can empty my cart, and finally, I can check out using a credit card. To do that, we will be using the Stripe payment gate. After entering the user information and credit card detail, the payment process will be completed and we will be able to see the customer payment in the Stripe dashboard. It's a great project to learn React and Headless CMS. It's really important because Headless technology is gaining more and more popularity every single day. Probably in the future we won't have to deal with backend APIs and authentication. We will just design our applications and use any Headless CMS to manage our content. Last week I asked you to choose any content management system for this project and you have chosen Strapi. Actually, it's a great choice. It's a free open source project. It's really easy to learn. It has a nice admin panel. As you can see, this is the Strapi dashboard. We will run this on our local machine and we can create any table like products, categories, after that, we can directly start adding new items using the Content Manager. Also, you can choose any database, MySQL, PostgreSQL, LightSQL, whatever you want. And finally, we will deploy this application using Hostinger. It's the sponsor of this video and there is a great deal special for Black Friday on Hostinger.com. It offers an 84% discount for premium hosting that includes a free domain and SSL certificate. Also, if you use the link in the description below and LamaDev coupon code, you will get an extra 10% discount. You can deploy 100 websites on this hosting. It can be static websites, any JavaScript application or React application that uses a cloud database service like Firebase, but if you want to create an application that has its own local database and REST API server like this project, you can consider buying a VPS server. There is also a great deal for virtual servers. Actually, it's a perfect time to buy if you need a server because it's the biggest discount of the year. For this project, any of these plans will be more than enough. And don't forget, if you have multiple applications, you can deploy all of them in a single server using different port numbers. And it's a good opportunity to learn server management, Nginx, and some production security rules. Okay, I want to get this premium shared hosting also, because I want to use this free domain and SSL. Choose the time period, and don't forget to use the code here. After entering your payment information and purchasing, you will see the Hostinger panel. Let's claim our free domain. And right after that, we can set up the hosting. 
This process is really easy. I will choose my new domain. And that's all. It's gonna set up the configurations. And after that, you will be redirected to the H panel. In this panel, you can set up an email, manage your domains, and there is a daily backup option here in case of any mistake. And here is the file manager where you can upload the files of your application. So if you are ready, let's create our applications and deploy them using Hostinger. Okay, this is our main folder and inside this folder I'm gonna create two more folders. First one will be our client site and one more folder and it's gonna be API. Basically, it's gonna include our Strapi API that we can create new products, new categories or whatever and using this React application we are gonna show them on the browser. Let's open up our terminal, I will say client and I'm gonna install a React application. To do that, of course, you can use Create React App or any front-end tool, but I recommend you to use my GitHub repository and find this branch. In this case, we won't have to delete any unnecessary files. It's gonna be ready to use. I'm gonna come here, copy this URL. I will say git clone single branch branch name here. I'm gonna paste this URL dot and enter. As you can see they are here but we don't have libraries yet. Yarn or npm install and during this process let's check what we are gonna have. As you can see this is our home page. We can check any category here and we are gonna be navigated to this endpoint and we can see any product. To navigate between those pages, we are going to be using React Router DOM. As you can see, we are going to create our routes here. And for the home page, for example, we are going to call the home page component. For the products page, we are going to call the product list. And we will do the same thing for the single product page. So let's install this. Yarn at React Router DOM. And after that, I'm going to open my app.js. Let's shrink this. And as you can see, it's totally empty. There is nothing unnecessary. We can directly start our application. Let's import those components here. And we should wrap our application using this router provider. And let's create our router. I will say const router and I will say create router browser. And inside this array, we are going to write our routes. And the first one will be our home page. Let's say the main URL. And when we visit this page, let's write here something. Home page. And let's duplicate this. Products. And it's going to be our categories. So we can write here any category ID. And uh, finally, a single page and the product ID. Let's see. We don't need this, by the way. I can delete. I'm going to open my terminal and start my application. I'll say yarn start. I should choose another port. that because I'm using 3000 for this application. And it's going to be 3001. And as you can see, it's our home page. If I go to products and any category ID here, as you can see, and single product. Perfect. It works like that. So instead of those texts, let's create our pages. I'm going to come here and say pages. Uh, first one will be home. Products and products. Let's create our components. I will say products.jsx. 
I will do the same thing for others. Okay. Let's create our functions. Home page, single page, and category page. Okay. We can use them here. I'm going to call the home page products as you can see it's exactly the same thing okay but there is something important here for the home page category page and a single product page we are going to be using this navbar and this footer so instead of writing them for each component separately, we can handle this using React Router DOM. To do that, we are going to be using Outlet component, and we are going to create a layout which includes this navbar and footer, and between those components, we can call our home page, category page, or product page. You are going to understand better right now. But before, let's create our components. I will come here and say, Components, new folder will be navbar, footer, and I'm going to create my functions like that. Okay, let's call those components here and create a layout. I will say const. Layout and it's going to return a main view. Let's say class name app. And in this layout, we are going to write a navbar, footer, and between them, we are going to be using React Router DOM outlet. Basically, it represents our different pages. So we can write here anything we want. I'm going to come here and delete those routes. And instead of home, I'm going to call my new layout. And I'm going to create here children of this layout. There is a comma here, by the way. First one will be our home page. It's going to be the main URL. And element will be the home page. Let's create other children, products and ID, products page and product. As you can see, this is our home page. It includes our navbar and footer. Let's go back to categories, as you can see, and a single product. Oops. Like that. It's that easy, guys. By the way, there are many features of the new React Router DOM. If you want me to create a tutorial about this React Router DOM, just let me know in the comments, because it has some awesome features like loader or data fetcher. Okay, I'm gonna close here. And let's take care of this navbar first. As you can see, we have three sections here, this left, center, and right side. We can do this quickly using Flexbox. If you are watching my videos, you already know how to use it. Let's create quickly. I'm gonna close everything here and open up my navbar. Let's give a class name here. By the way, we are gonna be using SAS. I'm gonna open up new terminal here, and I will say yarn add SAS. I'm not using a plain CSS that because we have many components here and I don't want to give any class name for every single HTML element. Using SAS will be much more easier. So I will say navbar and let's say left, center and right. But before those sections, I can create here a wrapper that because I'm going to give some padding here. Let's say wrapper. And I'm gonna wrap my sections. Okay, we have six items here. Let's create, and as you can see, we are gonna be using some icons here. 
and for this one and for the right side of course you can use any images but i prefer using mui if you open up mui.com and material icons you are gonna see this page and as you can see there are many icons here we are gonna be using them of course to do that we should install mui first let's copy this and paste here and also we are gonna need this library yarn add material icons okay let me make this bigger and i'm gonna write here arrow okay we are gonna be using this icon for these ones let's copy this let's copy and paste those icons also like that as you can see search icon person favorite icon and this cart icon but as you realize we have an image here let's create a folder and store our images there i'm gonna open my menu here and inside this public folder i'm gonna say images i'm gonna drag and drop my images as you can see we have two images here this flag and this footer image as you can see it's here so we can use them i'm gonna close and create my first item it's gonna be this flag image image folder and finally this icon let's copy this and paste here let's see okay icon is here but we don't have our image okay it's here so let's create other items also i will say item usd and same icon here and finally our links to use those links we are going to be using react router long let's say new item and inside i'll say link and it's going to be woman and we are going to be navigated to products remember it's our category and let's say category number one let's import this link from react router dom like that let's see if i click here it's gonna open up this category page and let's do the same thing for others men and let's say children number two number three what about this center it's gonna be only our logo i will say link llama store and when we click on this text it's gonna open up our home page like that okay what about this right side we are gonna have our links here and those icons let's create other links i'm gonna copy this item home page about page contact and stores of course we are not going to create those pages but for the ui purpose we are just going to add those links and finally those icons let's create a div here and i will say icons our first icon will be this search icon person favorite icon and finally our cart icon but as we realize we have one more item here which shows the number of the products inside our cart so i'm gonna create different div here first and it's gonna wrap this icon and this span let's say cart icon it's gonna be our mui icon and finally let's say span and zero for now as you can see they are vertical let's use a flex box and make them horizontal but first i want to give a height for this navbar by the way let's create our css file here navbar.scss our first div which is navbar 
this one by the way i should import my css file here mapper.scss okay i'm gonna close my menu and i'm gonna take this css file here so we can see better let's say hide 80 pixels and inside we are going to be using our wrapper as you can see we can write our items inside its parent and it's the one of the greatest feature of sas let's give a padding here 10 pixels from top and bottom and 30 from left and right if i say display flags they are going to be horizontal i'm going to save here and okay left side center and right side let's separate them I will say justify content and space between. As you can see, we are separating them like that. Let's do the same thing for left and right side. I will say left, center, and right. I will say display flags like that. Perfect. As you can see, they are not centered vertically. To do that, I'm going to be using align item center. Okay, and I can give some space between those items. So let's say 25 pixels. Like that. And right now, those items are not centered. Let's create here our item div. I'm writing this here that because it's not only in the left or right side, it's a common class name. I'm gonna say display flex, align item center, and right now they are centered okay let's increase those item font size and this logo font size i will say font size 18 pixels and for the center i'm gonna say 30 pixels it's gonna be bigger and i'm gonna give some letter spacing oops something is wrong here left side Oh, I said center, of course, it's going to be item. Okay, let's center those items also. I'm going to be using align item center and perfect. And as you realize, we have a default link color and text decoration here. Let's get rid of this. To do that, I can create a common CSS file that because we are going to be using those links everywhere. Let's open up app.js here and I'm gonna create app.scss scss and if you remember we have a class name here we can use it and this is gonna wrap all our application here in this case we can use our links anywhere I will say import app.scss let's say app and I'm gonna say link class name and color will be inherit and text decoration will be no. Basically, we are gonna delete those underlines and these custom colors. Let's use them in our links. I'm gonna come here and choose my links. And I'm gonna give a class name. And right now, it looks much better. So what about those icons? Let's make them horizontal also. I'm going to close here. I will say icons, display flags. I'm going to give gap between them. And color will be this gray color. And cursor will be pointer. And what about this cart icon? Remember, we have a div here. Inside icons div, I can create my class name and let's take care of this span. I will just say span. Let's decrease this font size. I'm gonna give some width and height and it's gonna be a circle. To do that, we are gonna be using border radius and 50%. Let's give a background color. It's gonna be this blue background color and text color will be white. Okay, 
it's here but what I want to do is to move this span onto our cart icon somewhere here. To do that we are going to be using position absolute. In this case for the parent I should give position relative otherwise it's not going to work and I can give any position right now. Let's say right minus 10 and top minus 10. And as you can see, it's here. Perfect. Let's center this number. Display flex, align item center, just by content center. It's going to center vertically and horizontally. Like that. And navbar is ready. Let's take care of this footer. Let's see what we are going to have. As you can see, we have two parts. This top section and bottom section. And for the top section, we are going to have four different columns, those links and some text here. And for the bottom side, we are going to have two sections, left and right. Let's create. I'm going to close everything and open up footer. Let's give it class name. I will say top, bottom, we will have four items. And the first one will be this h1 tag and those links. I will just copy paste them. There is nothing important here. As you can see, h1 and some spans. I will do the same thing for the second one. And for the text items, we have again h1 tag and span. There is nothing different. I'm just going to copy them like that and it's going to be contact and what about this bottom as i said two sections left and right it's going to include our logo and this copyright text and right side will include this image it's that easy let's say left right i'm going to create a span which is our logo and one more, let's say copyright, llama store, and this copyright text. I don't know how to make this copyright sign, so I'm gonna paste here. And uh, for the right side, we are gonna have our image, image folder, payment.png. Okay, they are here. Let's give some style for them. Of course, to do that, we are gonna create a style file footer.scss let's import by the way and for the consistency I can make this capital F and here okay let's take this here and give some style Firstly, I'm going to give some margin here. As you can see, we have margin from left and right, from top and a little bit for bottom. So I'm going to say margin, top, right, bottom and left. Like that. Of course, we cannot see our bottom that because we don't have enough content yet. But trust me, it works. <laughs> and inside, I'm going to say top bottom inside this bottom remember we have left and right side and inside top I will say display flex and gap between each item will be 50 pixels let's create our items as you can see our items are not the same size but in our example they are exactly the same to do that we can use flex here if I say one they are gonna be exactly the same size like that let's make those items vertical to do that we can use again display flex but flex direction will be color basically it's gonna be vertical and between each item it's gonna be 10 pixels by the way i can change this text align it's gonna be justify 
And as you can see, it looks much better. I want to decrease this font size. It's too big. Let's say 14. Perfect. And I can decrease this H1 tag also. Let's say 18 pixels. Font weight will be 500. And color will be a little bit softer. And for those pens, color will be gray. Okay. What about this bottom? It's going to be horizontal again. Display flags, align items, just five content space between. But I want to give a margin here between this top and bottom. So let's say margin top 50 pixels. Let's make this display flags, align item center, like that. And for this logo, remember. Here. I'm gonna change its color, font weight will be bold, and font size will be a little bit bigger, like that. And for this text, copyright, I'm gonna give margin left, I'm gonna separate them like that, and decrease this font size, and color will be gray. As you can see, this image is too big. I'm going to say image. Height will be 50 pixels. Okay, awesome. Let's check. As you can see, it's exactly the same. Right now, we have our common components. Let's take care of our home page. Okay, let's check. By the way, I can close them. And as you can see, we are going to have a slider here. Let's create. I'm going to close everything and open up my components folder. And I'm going to say slider. Let's create our slider JSX file and CSS file. I'm going to create my function. And write here a class name. Firstly, I'm going to create here a data, which includes three images. And we are going to be using them in our slider. To do that, firstly, we are going to create here a container. And when we click on those buttons, we are going to move this container on the X axis. Of course, we are going to need a functionality here. If you watch my previous video, understanding this part will be much more easier. I've created this slider using a plain JavaScript. We are just going to transform this into a React application. It's going to be similar. If you think you have some problems with JavaScript, I highly recommend you to watch that video. You will be able to improve your JavaScript skills and it will help you to understand this video. Okay, let's write here our images. First image will be data and first element. Of course, I should wrap this. Second image and third image. Of course, at the beginning, we are going to see only the first image. It's going to contain all this screen. But when we click here, we are just going to move our container and we will be able to see other images. Let's create those icons. After this container, I'm going to say icons. We will have two icons. Let's import them. I don't want to search for every single icon. We already have an example here. You can see what kind of icons we are going to be using. First one will be this left icon and second one will be this right icon. Let's write them here. And the second one. East. Okay, of course we should import our slider into home page. Let's write here a class name, home, and inside slider. By the way, let's import CSS files for those pages. Single product and products.
okay let's import home.css and for products and a class name here uh, finally for this one okay I can close everything and open up my slider again let's see right now oops of course uppercase As you can see our images are here so what i want to do is to give a height for our slider component i'm going to open up my css file and i'm going to say height calculate 100 vh but minus 80 pixels and width will be full width like that and let's create our container width will be 300 that because we have three images and i'm going to make them horizontal let's import this and let's see okay as you can see it's overflowing that because we didn't give any height or width for our images i'm gonna come here and say image width will be 100 vw it's gonna contain our screen and height will be a hundred percent of course if you are using percent you should give for parent also let's see okay and our other images as you can see they look a little bit weird that because we don't have any object fit here let's say cover and it's gonna cover our component like that so what I'm gonna do is to show you how we can move our container if I say transform translate X and let's say minus 500 pixels and as you can see we just moved our slider 500 pixels so instead of 500 if I say 100 VW as you can see it's gonna show our second image if I say 200 it's our third image and finally for the zero it's gonna be the first image again of course we are not gonna write it here instead we are gonna be using our JSX file and we are gonna make our slider dynamic when we click on those buttons we are gonna be using this transform effect by the way let's move them somewhere here to do that we can use position absolute and as I said if you are using absolute make the parent position relative and after this container I'm gonna say icons position absolute I'm gonna center this if I say left zero right zero and margin auto it's gonna be horizontally centered but if I do that as you can see it's still here that because its width is a hundred percent right now if I give here any width for example a hundred pixels as you can see it's centered let's make them horizontal okay and I can change this bottom position let's say 100 pixels perfect and for each icon I'm gonna create a border remember our icons are here I'm gonna give some width and height and some border one pixel solid and let's make this gray and I'm gonna center those icons remember how we are doing this by the way I can give some gap but if you remember we said 100 pixels I want to change here it's gonna just fit our content okay I can give cursor pointer so we can click and that's all of course i'm gonna change this image and it's gonna look better 
Okay, whatever. Let's change our images. I'm gonna shrink this and I want to create here a use state hook. And it's gonna provide us which image index we are on. At the beginning, it's gonna be index zero. So we are gonna see this image. I'm gonna say const current slide set current slide. I'm gonna say use state hook. At the beginning, it's gonna be zero. And we are gonna create here our functions. When I click on this icon, on click event, we are gonna see the previous slide, like that. And when I click on this button, we are gonna see the next slide. Let's create them. I will say const previous slide and next slide. So basically, when we click on this button, we are gonna decrease our slide number. But there is something important here. If we are in the first slide, it shouldn't be minus one. When I click, as you can see, it's going to last image. So I should consider exactly the same thing here. When I click on this right button, it shouldn't be number three. It should be number zero again. It's zero right now. I will click one two and when i click it shouldn't be three it should be zero and for this one when i click it shouldn't be minus one it should be the last image which is number two okay let's write this functionality i will say set current slide and i'm gonna write my condition if current slide is zero i'm gonna make it two basically the last image if it's not I'm just gonna decrease it. Current slide minus one. Of course, you can use here previous like that. So I will do the same thing for here. And I'm gonna check my current slide. If it's two, it's gonna be the first in which. If it's not, I'm gonna increase this number. And right now, I can come here and write an inner style. Instead of style file, we are going to be using our JavaScript file. And I will say transform and translate x. It's going to be exactly the same thing, but we are going to be using this current slide. Remember, it was minus. And I'm going to write here my current slide multiply by 100 VW. If it's 0, it's going to be 0, 100, and 200, as I showed you here. Let's save and see. I'm gonna open my app. I will click, as you can see, second image and third image. If I click the first image, if I click here, the last image. It's that easy, guys. By the way, I can give some animation here. I'm gonna open up container and transition will be for all effects. It's gonna take one second and timing function will be ease. Like this. Okay, awesome. So I can close here and let's see what else we are gonna have. As you can see, after this slider, we are gonna have these featured products. Let's create a new component. Featured products, new file, my function and style, like that, and finally class name. Okay, it's ready. Let's open up our home page and call it here. Featured products. But as you can see, we have two featured products here. It's exactly the same component, but we are changing this title. It's trending 
and it's featured we can send them using a type here i will say featured and let's create one more and it's going to be trending okay so i'm going to create here my fake data of course after our api we are going to change it but for now as you can see we have products which have different ids images title prices and this boolean here which writes here a new season like that so we are going to be using those properties but before let's write here a top container and bottom container and create this h1 tag and this p tag i will say top bottom it's gonna be h1 tag we are gonna write here our type products of course i should take this prop here like that and a random text here i will just copy paste p tag and this is our text and what about here we are going to have four different cards here and also we are going to be using those cards for our category component category page as you can see it's exactly the same so we can create our own component here i will say cards i will create them quickly okay so what i'm gonna do is mapping through this data and for each item inside this data we are gonna call this card component i will say data dot map for each item it's gonna be card component and we are gonna pass this item and remember if you are using map you should write here a unique key and it's gonna be our item dot id each item has different ids okay let's see we have four cards let's take care of this style and after that we can create our card i'm gonna give some margin here from top and bottom and left and right and for the top it's gonna be horizontal align item center justify content space between but as you can see they are too close so what i should do is to give different sizes for this item and this item let's check here as you can see this item is a little bit bigger than this item let's use a flex i will say h1 tag flex will be two units and uh, for the p tag flex will be three units like that and i can capitalize this first letter i'll say text transform capitalize like that let's change this font color it's gonna be gray okay uh, for those cards top is ending here i will say bottom it's going to be display flags justify content will be center and let's give 50 pixels space okay of course they look a little bit strange but when we create our cards it's going to be much better by the way i can give a margin here let's see margin bottom 50 so let's create our cards i can close here and here and i'm gonna take this item and firstly i'm gonna create here a link that because when we click on those cards we are gonna go to the product page and here i'm gonna write my item id this product id let's import this link React Router DOM like that. Inside this card, let's see. As you can see, we are gonna have this image container, 
and it's going to include two images. When I hover over, we are going to see the second image. Let's create here images or just image. And I'm going to create image and it's going to be main image. And one more and it's going to be second image. Let's write here item dot image item dot image two and after that we are gonna have this title and I'm gonna create here a container which includes the old price and the current price. After this image I'm gonna say h2 tag item dot title and after that let's say prices h3 tag dollar sign and item dot old price and the normal price okay images are too big but as you can see our title old price and the new price so let's take care of them by the way i'm gonna give here a class name and it's gonna be link and let's open up our css here and i'm gonna give a width first and it's going to be display flags but remember how we are making them vertical flag direction column and i'm going to give a gap between them of course we should handle our images first let's come here and say image what was the component name okay image width will be a hundred percent and height will be let's say 400 but i just want to see one image here so i'm gonna say overflow hidden so we are gonna see only the first image but when i hover over it's gonna show us the second image we are gonna do this but before let's write here image size with a hundred percent height a hundred percent so it's gonna contain our parent div and object width will be cover okay they are too small Let's increase this. Okay, better. So how I'm gonna show the second image here? Firstly, I'm gonna make our images position absolute. Of course, remember position relative for the parent. Our images positions are exactly the same. They start from here and they contain all this container div. But as you can see, it shows the second image right now. If I come here and say main image C index one is gonna be over the second image. But when I hover over this image container, I'm gonna increase the second image's Z index. So it's gonna be bigger than first one. In this case, we are gonna see the second image. So I will come here, image container, and I'm gonna write Hover. When I hover over this, it's going to affect our second image and Z index will be 2. Okay, perfect. It works as we expected. So what about those texts? By the way, I can write here S pen and I'm gonna write here a condition if item is new actually spam will be here let's delete them and it's gonna be new season after those images I can write it here position absolute let's say five pixels left five pixels i'm gonna give a background color it's gonna be white text color will be this green color let's give some padding inside okay we cannot see that because it's z index is zero let's make this Three, so it's gonna be on top of them by the way this top is 50 it's gonna be 5 okay and I'm gonna decrease this font size and increase font weight 
500 and 12. Okay, perfect. So let's take care of our title here. H2 tag. Font size will be smaller. Font weight will be thinner. And uh, for the prices, this container is going to be display flags and gap between them. And uh, for each item inside, font size will be a little bit bigger. Font weight 500. Okay. And uh, for this first item, I'm going to change its color and also I'm going to add this line. To do that, we are going to be using the first child, let's say color gray, and text decoration, line through, like that. Okay, awesome. Let's check here, as you can see, it's exactly the same. And between those items, we are going to create this category component. Let's do that. I'm going to close them. New component here. Let's say categories. Okay, our function and CSS file is ready. Let's see what we are going to have. As you can see, there is a grid system here. Of course, you can use CSS grid, but for the consistency, I'm going to be using Flexbox and you are going to see how easy to use grid systems using Flexbox. You don't need CSS grid at all. Firstly, let's decide what we are going to have. As you can see, we have three sections here, three columns, the first one, second one, and the third one. And the first column has two rows, row one, row two, and second column has only one row, and the third column has two rows again, those items and this one. And for this row, it has two different columns, men and accessories. So it's all about columns and rows. You are gonna understand better right now. Let's create our columns, three different columns, but for the last column, I'm gonna add one more class name and it's going to be column large. Its size will be twice bigger than other columns. Let's create our rows. Inside first column, I'm going to create row one, row two. Let's write inside. And for the second one, we are going to have only one row. Uh, for this one, we are going to have two rows and inside the first row, as I said, we are going to have two more columns and they have only one row. And if you are familiar with Bootstrap, it's going to be easier to understand, but if you don't know, don't worry. As I said, it's all about columns and rows. Just calculate what you have. Three columns first. One of them is bigger than others. And for each column, just calculate how many rows you have. Okay. So let's write here. Row six. And I'm going to open home page. And between them, I'm going to call this category. Okay. Let's come here. So firstly, I'm going to make this display flex. And I can give any height here. Let's say ATVH. It really doesn't matter. You can give whatever you want. Uh, for each column, I'm going to give some gap. And I can give some margin for this container. As you can see, there's a space here. And let's see. As you can see, first, second, and third column. And for each column, I'm going to use flex1. But as I said, if it's column and large, flex will be 2. Let's give here 
display flags, flag direction, column, and gap between each row will be 10 pixels. There is something wrong. Oh, it's going to be margin. Okay, perfect. It's bigger than others. And for each row, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Flex will be one. Okay, and it's going to be display flex also. And gap between each item. Like that. Perfect. And let's give our images insight. We are going to have an image for each row. I will paste my source here. And after this image, I'm going to add a button. And it's going to be category name. So I can create here a link. Let's say sale. Class name will be link. Let's import. From React Router Top. And when we click on this, we are going to be navigated to products and let's say one for now. Let's see. Okay, let's give size for images. Inside row, I'll say image with 100%, height 100%, and object width will be cover. So I can do the same thing for other rows. I will just copy and paste them. Row 2 will be this image and woman. Row 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let's see. Okay. But as you can see, it looks strange that because our buttons shouldn't be there, they should be in the middle of the parent row. To do that, I'm going to come here and say position relative, that because it's the parent. And I'm going to write here button. It's going to be position absolute. Let's give minimum width 100 pixels. I'm going to give some height, a padding inside. And I'm going to write here my position. Let's say top, bottom, left, and right. And if I say margin auto, it's going to be centered. But in this case, their width is 100%. I'm going to say width fix content. Okay, I'm giving this minimum width. That because if I don't do this, as you can see, those items are really small. To prevent this, it's going to be minimum 100. Let's say cursor pointer. I'm going to delete those borders. I'm going to say background color white. And I'm going to make them uppercase. So text transform is going to be uppercase. And font width will be 500. Okay, perfect. But there is something wrong here. This image is overflowing. Overflow hidden. And as you can see, perfect. So when I click on them, it's going to open up our products page. By the way, there is a typo. The first one. Let's try back. Okay. Before this category page, what else we have? Let's check. As you can see, we are going to create this contact component. Let's do that quickly. I will close them, open up my menu. New component is going to be contact. Okay, it's ready. Let's see. We are going to have a wrapper here that we can give some padding inside. And here we are going to have three items, this text, this email section, and those icons. I will come here and say wrapper 
pen. I'm going to copy this text and paste. And after that, this mail section, which includes an input. Let's give a placeholder. Let's see. Enter your email. and a button it's going to be join us and finally we are going to have icons and we are going to be using material icons let's import them i will not waste your time there is nothing important here like that let's see of course we didn't import this Let's open up home page after this categories or after this product. I'm going to say contact. OK. Let's open up our CSS. I'm going to give a background color. It's going to be this blue color and font color will be white. Let's give some padding like that. Of course, it's going to be horizontal. To do that, we can use our wrapper. I created here a wrapper that because in our example, as you can see, we are going to have some space here for the left and right side. Basically, I can give here a width. It's going to be 50%. It's going to be smaller. Let's center this wrapper. like that and let's make this horizontal display flags align item center justify content space between okay perfect what about this input i'm gonna give some padding i will delete this border this could be none and i'm gonna give border radius in our example, as you can see, we have border radius for this side and this side. And this top right and bottom right will be sharp. And we are going to do exactly the same thing for this button. Let's do that. I'm going to open my app here. I will say 5005. And, and for our button, Again, 10 pixels, font color will be white, and background color will be this dark color, and border radius, this time is going to be 0550, and I'm going to delete its border also. Okay, and for those icons, I can give some gap between them, I will say icons, display flags, cap, let's say 10, oops, it's going to be icons, not icon, okay, and that's all for the home page, it looks really nice, by the way, as you can see, it's overflowing because of this slider, I forgot writing here, overflow hidden, let's open up our CSS file, and I'm going to say overflow hidden. So let's take care of our category page here. Let's check. So as you can see, we have two sections, this menu and our content. And for this content, we are going to have this image and we are going to have product lists. Of course, we will be using our cards here. So let's create them. I'm going to close them. Open up products. Left and right. And inside this left, we are going to have three items. Categories, filter by price, and sort by price. So I will say filter item. And three of them. And first one will be product, categories, f 
filter by price and sort by. Okay, as you can see, we have two inputs here. Let's write here input item. And it's going to include an input, which is a checkbox. And I'm going to create a label here. It's going to represent our input. So let's give an ID here. It's going to be one. And its value will be one. And label will be one. Let's see. Okay. Of course, it's not one. I'm sorry. It's going to be our category name. Let's say shoes. Okay, when I click here, it's going to choose our checkbox. So let's create one more or two more. I don't know. Let's say skirts, coats maybe. I'm going to change its ID. Like that. Okay, so we can choose any category here. And what about this filter by price? As you can see, we are going to be using this range input. Again, input item. I'm going to write here 0, let's say 1000. And between them, I'm going to create an input and it's going to be range. You can give here any number, minimum 0, maximum, let's say 1000. like that and finally two radio buttons here so we can choose only one of them i will say input item it's gonna be input and its type will be radio let's say id and value and i'm gonna give a name here it's gonna be a common name and let's say price and finally, let's create a label. It's going to be our input ID. And let's say price lowest first. And one more. I'm going to change here. And it's going to be highest first. Okay, perfect. And for this section, we are going to have this image and a list let's say image i'm gonna paste my source and uh, class name will be category image and after that we are gonna have a list to do that we can create a new component and uh, using this component we can show our cards okay I'm doing this that because we are going to fetch different products according to our filters. So it's not going to be like in the home page. So writing them in a different component is a better idea. So using this list, we can fetch our data. But for now, we are going to be using again this fake data. After our API, we are going to delete this. Let's say data.map. For each item, we are going to call our card component and I'm going to pass my item here. And also a key, don't forget that, item.id. Okay, let's import this. Okay. So I'm going to call this list here. And of course, we are going to pass our filters. First one will be category ID, which is this ID. So when we open this page, it's going to fetch our data according to this category ID. To do that, we are going to be using React Router DOM. I will say const params is going to be use params hook. And let's see what we have inside. And as you can see, it's an object. Let me zoom in. And it includes our ID. 
it shows this because of React router DOM, so we can use this ID. But as you realize, it's a string, so I should convert this into an integer. So I will say ID, use params.id, and I'm going to convert this to integer. Okay, right now we have our ID, let's say actually category ID, and I'm going to create a use state here. I will say const maximum price set maximum price let's say 1000 of course we are going to change it and whenever i change this range input i'm going to update my maximum price so let's say on change set maximum price and it's going to be event target and value so instead of this i can write here our maximum value sorry maximum price as you can see it's 1000 and i can change here perfect and for this sort const sort set sort view state at the beginning it's going to be null we are not going to sort anything but when we change here we are going to update our state so i'm going to say on change event set sort and it's going to be asc i will do the same thing for other one like that so i can send them using this list component i will say category id maximum price and sort as you can see they are here and let's give some style i'm gonna open up css i'm gonna give some padding here and uh, for left and right it's gonna be display flags oops uh, sorry it's product it's gonna be products like that and let's give it for this first item and second item i mean left and right so it's gonna be three times bigger than first one so i will say flex three flex one and for category image it's gonna be a hundred percent otherwise it's gonna overflow and let's give any height here of course object fit and margin bottom will be 50 pixels what about this list let's give display flex quickly i'm gonna open my list css display flags justify content space between and i'm gonna write here flex wrap and it's gonna be wrap so if we add here By the way, I can give margin here for our cards. Margin bottom, let's say 50. Okay, perfect. This is how we are using flag strap. If I move this, as you can see, it's only three items, two items, and one item. So it's perfect for creating responsive design. By the way, there's a warning here that because we are using same key, I just copy and paste same items let's delete them okay what about this left side let's close everything here i'm gonna open up from scratch and what i'm gonna do here is giving a position sticky for this left side i'm doing this that because let's check our example when i move my page as you can see it always stays here it's not moving to give this effect, we are going to be using position sticky. Of course, if you are using position sticky, you should give any height here. And my position will be top 50 pixels. So after 50 pixels, it's going to stay there. It's not going to move. 
Perfect. As you can see, awesome. What about those items? Let's separate them. I will say filter item. I'm gonna give some margin button. Let's say 30 pixels. And for titles, 400. And again, margin button, 20 pixels. Like that, it looks better. And for each input item, input item, margin button, let's say 10. And for those labels, they are to close each other. I'm going to separate them. So margin left, let's say 10. Okay, let's check. As you can see, it's exactly the same. And what about single page? I will click. We are here. And let's check what we have. As you can see, again, two section, left, right. And for the left section, we are going to have two parts. Those images that we can choose any of them and this main image. And after that, we are going to create this content. Let's open up product. I will say left and right. And inside this left, we are going to have images container. Let's say image. And we are going to take those images from this fake data. Let's say images zero and one. So I'm going to create here an index. And when we click them, we are going to change the index number. And after that, we are going to show the main image. Let's create here main image div. And we are going to write here images array. But index will come from our use state. Let's say const selected image, for example. Set selected image use state. At the beginning, it's zero. It's going to show the first image. And when I click here, on click event, it's going to set my selected image and it's going to be zero. And for this image, it's going to make our index one. And according to this selected image, we are going to update our main image. Let's see. As you can see, the first image, if I click here, it's going to change. Okay, let's give some style. I will say product. Let's give some padding. Top and bottom, left and right. It's going to be display flex. I'm going to give gap between my items for left and right side. Let's create my items here, left, right. And for the left side, we have images container and main image container. Let's give flags for left and right side. They are going to be exactly the same width. So flex one, flex one. And for the left side, this main div will be five times bigger than these images. So I'm going to come here and say flex one and flex five. Let's write here our images. 100% height will be 150 and object fit and we can click them so I'm gonna write here cursor pointer and I'm gonna separate them I can give some margin like that and what about this main image again with 100% and I'm going to write here a maximum height. It's going to be a limit here. If it's more than 800 pixels, it's not going to change. And object with cover. Of course, I didn't give display flex for this left side. Let's give gap between them also. Perfect. I can choose any of them. It looks pretty nice. What about this right side? Let's see. We are going to have this title, price, description, and we are going to have a div here, which includes those buttons. 
and this number and after that this button and other details here. Let's start and we can check time to time. I will shrink this and I'm gonna come here and create my title. Any title, doesn't matter. We are gonna change this. And a span here, let's say any price. We are gonna have a description, let's say a p tag. I'm gonna write here any random text. And what else? Let's check this quantity container. And it's gonna include a button minus plus and between them I'm gonna write here a number. Let's actually create here a use state and at the beginning it's gonna be zero I'm gonna write it here like that and when we click on those buttons we are gonna update this. Let's say on click I'm gonna set my state I'm gonna use previous minus one. If you don't know why I'm doing this, you can check my use state hook video. I highly recommend you to watch it. It's a really nice video that you can see your mistakes and you can learn how to use use state properly. And it's gonna be minus one. Let's see. I'll click, okay. But there's a problem here, as you can see, I can go under zero. It shouldn't be like that. So I can write here a condition. If previous is one, it's gonna stay at one, it's not gonna change. If it's not, it's gonna be minus one. Let's see. I'm gonna refresh. At the beginning, of course, it's going to be 1. If I click, it's not going under 1. Okay, and what does we have this button? After this container, I'm going to create a button. And let's give a class name. And as you can see, we have an icon here. And we have two more icons, this one and this one. Let's import them. I will come here and import. And first one will be this icon. Inside this button. And I will say add to cart. Let's say links container. And it's going to include those items. Two items inside like that. And first one will be this icon and add to wish list. And other one, this icon add to compare. And what about those? They are not that important. I can just copy paste, I think. They are just for UI purpose. After this link, I will paste them. As you can see, we have some information texts and details texts. They are not functional. We cannot click on them, but it looks nice. So let's take care of our style. I can make this bigger. I'm gonna open up right container and I will say display flex is gonna be vertical column and gap between them. So we gave space, perfect. So what about this price? Where is our item here? I'm gonna change this class name because we have many span I don't want to see any conflict, so I will say price, font size will be a little bit bigger, I'm gonna give our blue color here, and font weight will be thicker. And what about this p tag, it's our description, remember, font size will be a little bit bigger, but font weight will be thinner, and text align just fine. Remember how we are using this. If it's a long text, it's gonna look better. And for this component, this container, remember, quantity, display flags, 
align item center and gap between them. We have a button. But before, let's take care of those buttons. I'm gonna give some padding and delete this border. Let's say 50 pixels. I'm gonna center them. And we can click on them. And finally, border none. Like that. What about this button? Actually, we have a class name here. We can use it. I'm gonna give width. Let's give some padding. I'm gonna change background color. It's gonna be blue. And font color will be white. Like that. Let's center them. Gap 20. And we can click on them. Like that. By the way, let's center horizontally also. Just like right content center. Perfect. I can delete this border. And let's give font weight 500. Okay, awesome. What about those links here? Links. Display flags, gap like that and for each item again display flex and i'm gonna center them and line item center and space between them okay i'm gonna change their color it's gonna be blue and font size will be a little bit smaller like that okay what about this information It's gonna be vertical after these links. Column, space, color will be gray, font size will be 14, and I'm gonna give margin top, that because I'm gonna give some space here. And finally, those details here. Actually, it's exactly the same thing. So I can delete this, I think. And right here, info. Let's change this HR tag. We have an HR here and inside this info. Let's take care of this one first. I will say 200 pixels. And I'm going to change this border. It's going to be 1 pixel solid and light gray maybe a little bit softer it's close to white like that and actually i can do the same thing for other hr after this info but i'm gonna delete this with it's gonna be bigger okay awesome so one more thing we are gonna need and it's gonna be this card when i click here as you can see this card component shows up. So let's create card component. Okay. So to open this component, we are gonna need a functionality for our navbar component. So let's open up navbar and I'm gonna create here a use state hook. I will say const open set open basically we will be able to open our card component or close it back so i will say use state hook at the beginning it's gonna be false and when i click on this card button on click i'm gonna set my state if it's true it's gonna be false if it's false it's gonna be true and after that i'm gonna write here a condition I will say if it's open, show here card component. Let's see. I will click, as you can see, it's here. I will click and it's gone. Perfect. So let's see what we have. We are going to have this title. 
let's say h1 after that we are going to have this item actually let's take one of these items i'm going to copy this and paste here const data like that let's take one more okay we can use those i will say data map and for each item i'm gonna create an item div and don't forget writing here item id and inside we are gonna have its image item dot image what else we are gonna have those details its title description quantity and price let's say details h1 tag item dot title p tag item dot description but there is something important here this description can be really long but i don't want to show all these text here so basically i'm gonna give a limit here to do that we are gonna be using javascript substring method and it's gonna take only first 100 characters by the way it's gonna be lowercase okay and price and now i'm gonna write this actually let's write here item dot price and finally this icon i will copy and paste here after this item i'm gonna use this icon let's give a class name that because i'm gonna change its font color so let's say just delete actually it's gonna be inside this div that because for each item we are gonna have this icon and we will be able to delete them and after this item we are gonna have total price button and this text let's say total we are gonna have two span first one will be subtotal and i'm gonna write here a total price let's write here something doesn't matter we are gonna change it later and after this div a button checkout button and uh, finally a span which is reset reset cut okay it's not working that because we don't have any description here let's create and also you can give here a question mark if there is no description it's not gonna work i'm gonna open back of course image is too big and what i'm gonna do is giving a position absolute for this container and top will be 80 pixels remember this navbar is 80 pixels and right will be let's say 20 pixels because this margin is 20 it's gonna be exactly the same let's come here position absolute right 20 top 80 i'm gonna give a z index let's say any big number here in this case it's gonna be the first item we are gonna see and let's give background color it's gonna be white i'm gonna give some padding and let's take care of this image quickly otherwise we will not be able to see properly i'm gonna say image let's say 80 pixels height will be 100 and object fit okay we can see better right now by the way i can give a box shadow for this item i will just copy and paste you can google box shadow generator and you can arrange your own box shadow and let's take care of this h1 tag first inside the card i'm gonna say h1 i'm gonna give some margin button color will be gray font weight will be thinner and font size will be 24 like that and for this item they are gonna be horizontal let's say display flex align item center and gap and again margin button 
I'm going to separate them like that. Perfect. And remember, there's a details container here. We can change our title, p tag, and this price div. After this image, I'm going to say details. It's details or detail. Let's check. Oops, it's never. Okay, details. I'm going to say h1 tag. This is our product title, remember. 18 pixels, font weight will be 500. And for the p tag, it's going to be gray. I'm going to give some margin between top and bottom. Like that. Actually, let's give only bottom. And font size will be smaller. And for the price container, I'm just going to change its color. It's going to be our blue color. Like that. And for this icon, remember its class name is delete. It's going to be just red. And I can make this bigger font size. And I can click this, so I will say cursor pointer. And what about this? Let's check what was the name. I will close this number. Okay, this div. It's gonna be display flags. Justify content will be space between. So I'm gonna separate them. Font weight. Font size will be bigger. And I'm gonna give margin bottom. So it's gonna give a space between these texts and this button. And for this button, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, remember? So I will just copy and paste. It's nothing different. I will say button. And like that. Perfect. And what about this? I will say reset. Color will be red. And font size will be small. Of course, we can click. And awesome. So we have our homepage components, our cards. We can click and see our product. We can change image. This number. We can see our cart and our categories here. Okay, our UI design is ready. So let's take care of our backend server. Let's open a new terminal here. And I'm gonna open the API folder. I will say CD API. And inside this folder, we will be installing a Strapi application. To do that, I'm gonna open strapi.io. I will copy this code. npx create Strapi app. But I don't want any folder. I want to install everything in my API folder. So I will say dot and enter. As you can see, there are two options. If you choose the quick start, it's gonna use an SQLite database. But in my computer, I have a MySQL. So I'm gonna choose the custom section. We'll be using JavaScript. You can choose any database you want. I want to use MySQL. Let's give a name. I'll say store. I'll enter. And the username will be root. And my MySQL password. We will not be using SSL connection for now. I will say no. And it's going to create our application. And after this installation, we will see our database here. By the way, if you don't know how to use MySQL Workbench, you can watch my MySQL video. Of course, we are not going to write any SQL code or something, but I just want to show you how it creates a database here, and how it makes all those CRUD operations using MySQL. Okay, it's ready. Let's start our application. I'm going to say yarn and develop. Oops, there's a warning here. 
it says there is no store database I thought it's doing this automatically but we have to do this here I will say create schema and store let's apply okay it's here so I will run back and as you can see this is our dashboard localhost 1337 so let's sign up I will say Lamadev any email address here and password and let's start and that's all it's that easy guys we have a content manager that we can add our products categories but before of course we should create our tables using this type builder and in this section we can upload any image there are some plugins and marketplace that you can find some useful plugins and finally a setting button that we can configure our user roles api tokens and some other stuff here we are gonna see them later on but right now let's create our first table i will create a collection type as you can see by default there is a user collection i'm gonna create a new one here and it's gonna be product as you can see there is an api id here which we are gonna use as an api endpoint so when we say localhost 1337 api and products it's gonna fetch all data inside this product collection okay i will continue right now we can choose any type here first one will be our title it can be a short text so let's create others another field this time it's going to be a long text that because we are going to create a description we are going to have an image so i will choose media here let's say image but make sure that we are choosing single media that because we will upload only one image here i will finish another one if you remember we have one more image so i will say image 2 single and we are going to have a price so i will choose number and it's going to be a decimal so we can use any number like that i'm going to use boolean and it's going to decide whether our product is new season or not by the way in the advanced settings you can give any default value i will say false and that's all for now of course we are gonna have our categories and subcategories but before writing them let's create new collections i'm gonna save it's gonna restart my application and i will create new collection and it's gonna be category and it's gonna have a title description if you remember we have a category image here let's choose any category here so i will say image i'm gonna save and one more and it's gonna be subcategories I'm gonna create a title and that's all I will save and right now we can create our relationships I'm gonna open up products and add another field and here I'm gonna choose relation it's gonna be our category and you can choose the relationship type here I want to choose menu to many relationship that because our product can have different categories and also a single category can have multiple products i will finish and one more and it's going to be subcategory actually let's make them plural it's going to be many to many and i'm going to choose subcategory here let's change this oh it's plural 
okay we don't have to change it and let's save let's open up category and as you can see our products is here so we don't have to create from scratch if i open up subcategory products is here so creating tables and relationships are that easy guys you don't have to write any single sql code strapi does everything for you so i'm gonna create one more relationship and it's gonna be between category and subcategory it's gonna be many to many a category has multiple subcategories and a subcategory has multiple categories i will finish and save and that's all guys right now we can create our first item using this content manager i'm gonna choose here products create new item and i will say test product and description i'm gonna choose any image here actually if you have any image collection you can drag the drag and drop here let's do that i want to upload everything first i will drag and drop my images and we can choose any image right now and i will say upload these images and you can choose any image right now let's choose this one for example i will finish it's here and our second image will be this one let's write a price i'm gonna choose a category but we don't have yet let's save this but i'm not gonna publish yet that because we don't have any category let's create i'll say woman woman category i can choose any image here i didn't prepare anything but let's choose any image for now I will save and publish. Let's create others. I will say man, man category, any image here, and save and publish. Okay, two of them is enough. Let's create some subcategories. I will say hat, and it can belong to man or woman. I will save and publish. Another one. Let's say T shirt. Again, it can be man or woman. And last one, it can be suit. And its category will be only man. Okay, I can change my test product the category will be woman and the subcategory will be t-shirt i can save and publish okay guys we have created our first project using a category and subcategory and we don't have to handle any authentication we don't have to care about any route any controller everything inside this dashboard let's create another product I'll say actually let's choose our image first it can be this hat another one woman hat let's give a price is new will be true for example and the category will be woman and subcategory will be hat i will save and publish okay right now we can use our backend api to do that i'm gonna open up settings api token section here and i have to create an api token otherwise i will not be able to reach my tables and items i will say create a new api token i can give any name here my api you can give any token duration here it's gonna be unlimited and here you can customize your token type it can be only read only api and it's great if you are only fetching data 
But in our application, if you remember, we have a payment gateway here. So we have to create some orders after this process. So basically, it's not going to be only read only. So I will say custom. If you are choosing custom, you should come here and choose your security rules. For example, for category, it's going to be only find or find one. We can fetch all categories or we can fetch only single category. But we cannot create, update or delete any category using an API. I will do the same thing for products. Of course, it doesn't mean you cannot create or delete any product. It means you cannot do this using API. You have to come here in your dashboard and create in this panel. And subcategories, it will be the same. And that's all. I will save. And as you can see, we have an API token here. Let's copy this. And I'm going to open my React application and I will create an EMV file here. Let's say dot EMV React app API token. Let's paste it. This is a secret key. That's why we are using EMV file. You shouldn't reveal your secret keys in your application. You have to create an EMV file. Let me close this and those files. Actually, we should create one more thing here and it's going to be our backend API URL. I'll say React app API URL. And it's going to be localhost 1337 and API. Basically, this is going to be our endpoint. When we want to fetch our products, it's going to be like that. We can fetch any single product like that. And I'm going to show you how you can filter your items using this filter parameter. But we are going to handle them later. Let's delete here. I'm going to save. And let's open our terminal. I want to restart my application that because we have changed our EMV file. Okay, I can close here. It's already here. And let's try to fetch our first data. What we can fetch? Let's come here. We can fetch these featured products, for example. By the way, in our products, I forgot creating this field. Let's add another field here. And it's going to be enumeration. Basically, it allows you to create some options and the value of this field can be one of these options. Let's say type and it can be normal products, featured products or trending products. I will finish and save. Let's change one of our products. I'm going to open Content Manager, Product, and I want to change this one. Its type will be Featured Product. Let's change other one, Test Product, and it's going to be, let's say, Trending. OK. Right now we can fetch our data. To do that, we are going to be using React Axios. Let's create another one, new terminal, cd clients, yarn add Axios. Using this library, we are going to be using our backend API and fetch data. And also, we have to send our token secret. And using Axios, we can do this easily. We are going to see right now. I will close here and let's open up our home page. OK, as you can see, we have this component and we are going to fetch our data using this component. Featured products. OK, right now I can delete this data, but before, let's see how we are going to use Axios and fetch our data. To do that, I'm going to create a use state here. Let's say products, set products, 
view state and at the beginning it's going to be an empty array we don't have any product yet but when we visit this page we are going to call this use effect and we are going to fetch our data of course you can use react query or some other libraries but we are fetching only data we are not going to use any post method so we can use use effect here we don't need any library so i will say const fetch data it's going to be an async function i'll say try catch block if there is an error we are going to write it on the console of course we are going to change it later and let's fetch our first data i'll say const data await and axios it's going to be a get method and i will use my endpoint here it's already inside our env file remember so i'm going to be using process env file and react app api url what was the name let's check okay api url and we will need this token i will copy and i'm gonna set this as a header property and this property will be authorization and i'm gonna write here bearer and i'm gonna use my env file react app api token this is how we are fetching data using strapi don't forget this is important you have to send this header otherwise your api is not going to allow you to use your items okay let's import this axios from axios and let's see what we have here i will say console log data and of course i should call this fetch data function here i should write here my endpoint and it's going to be products so it will fetch all products let's see i'm going to open my console and there's an error here and it says it's forbidden let me make this bigger as you can see it's not allowing us to use this api there must be something wrong of course it should be headers i should write first headers and inside this object it will be authorization let's try and right now as you can see it's successful and we have a data here and inside this data we have our pagination details as you can see it says there is only one page and it's fetching maximum 25 data per page of course we have only two data here let's see first one and it includes its id and its attributes which includes every detail of our product everything is here title price description so we can use this data and change our cards let's do that we don't need this data anymore i can delete i can actually make here data and i can set my data here set data is gonna be response data dot data oops it's gonna be response okay right now we have our products and we are sending it to our card component like that if i do this as you can see they are gone but we can see that we have two items here let's open up card component and i'm gonna make some changes here firstly it's gonna be item dot attributes dot is new and as you can see our second item is new i will copy here and change this title and its price as you can see they are here we don't have any old price i can delete here or you can say if there is a old price write it here if there is no old price use the normal price and add it here maybe 20 more dollars 
I know this is strange, but everybody knows every brand uses this tactic. <laughs> okay, what else? We have an image here, but there is a problem. That because by default it's not sending our images here. If you want to see your images, your media, you have to come here and say a query here and it's gonna be populate and all like that right now let's see data right now as you can see our image is here and it includes a data folder and inside this data folder we have image id and its own attributes and we are going to be using this url of course to use this url we are going to need our strapi url which is localhost 1337 Let's write this into our env file, api url, and it's going to be, let's say, upload url. Let's restart our application. And right now we can use those images here. So I will say item.data dot attributes dot url of course it's gonna be image and i will do exactly the same thing here and to see those images we are going to be using our env file process env react app upload url of course there is a dot here let's copy this and paste here and let's see as you can see there is an error here oh i forgot here attributes i know it's a little bit strange but this is how it works as you can see they are here Perfect. Actually, I can give here some question marks in case of doesn't have any image or something. Okay. But as you realize, we have exactly the same products here, but how we are gonna filter them? If you remember, one of our product is trending product and other one is featured product. To do that, we are gonna be using Strapi filters. Let's open up our documentation. Here, we are using a REST API. As you can see, this is how we are using our endpoints to fetch data or to use post, put, or delete methods. And we have a parameters here. And as you can see, we can filter our data. Let me make this bigger. I will zoom in a little bit. Okay. And this is how we are filtering our items. We will write a query, filters key, and we are going to write our field. In this case, it's going to be type. And it's going to equal, we are going to be using equal operator here, and value. Let's do that. By the way, we can use equals, less than. It's going to be really useful for our application because we will compare prices, contains, null, not null, between. And also we can use or and and operator. We are going to see them later. First, let's create our first filter. I will come here. And if you remember, we have a prop here which says our type. We can use it. I will say one more query is going to be filters. I'm going to write here the field name. It's going to be type and equals our type prop. To do that, we can use here backtick. It's going to be easier. And I'm going to pass it here. I will say type. And right now, as you can see, there is only one product here. And if I scroll back, as you can see, this is our second product. Perfect. It's that easy, guys. 
and we are going to be patching our products for this featured product page category page and a single product page so writing this use effect for each page is not a good idea what i'm gonna do is to create a use fetch hook here i'm gonna create a new folder it's gonna be hooks it will include our custom hooks and i will say use fetch let's create a function here use fetch it will be async and we will be sending our endpoint here and using this URL we are gonna fetch our data let's copy this paste here and I will create my use state const data set data it can be empty array or you can write null whatever you want and two more it's going to be loading and error and at the beginning they are going to be false and we are going to change them here let's use axios actually i can also create another file for this axios and we can create an axios instance what i mean by that let's come here and say make request .js i will say export const make request we are going to be using axios and i will say create and here i can write my base url so i don't have to write this process emv and api url for each time basically we are going to be using this base axios instance and it's going to automatically write this data and headers authorization barrier and our api token by the way it's going to be colon of course and that's all so we don't have to write the same thing again and again i will come here and instead of this axios i will say make request let's import from make request.js so we don't need this url anymore it's gonna be the url which we are gonna send here and before starting this fetching process i can set my loading state it's gonna be true and after this operation it's gonna be false and i can set my error here set error is going to be true and the dependency will be of course our url and that's all let's send our data i will say return data loading and error and also i'm gonna return this use fetch hook and it's going to be export default let's use it i hope everything is okay i can delete here and this use state and i will say const data loading and error take this from use fetch hook and send here our url and it's going to be products populate and our filters type equal and this type i will make this backtick so i can delete this axios use effect and state and i can use this loading i will say if it's loading right here any loading component or just this text if it's not use this data it's already in our make request function we don't need that of course okay still not here okay 
copy and paste, as you can see, is not a good idea. <laughs> so I will create from scratch. We have data loading error at the beginning. It's null, false, false. I will say user fact. We will call this user fact whenever our URL changes. Oh, I get the reason, I think. This is this async. It shouldn't be there. Let's take this back. We already have async function here. We don't need that. And right now it's here. Okay, it was just a silly mistake. So I can close here. And I can use this error also. I will wrap here and I will say if there is an error right here something went wrong or you can show your error message if it's not show our data okay so I can do the same thing for this category section as you can see there's an error that because our list is using still this dummy data we are gonna change it so let's come here and comment this out for now like that okay as you can see we have some categories here what i want to do is to fetch my subcategory according to my main category this is our main category id and in our application remember its id is one and it means we are in the woman category and using this id we can fetch the subcategories let's do that i will delete here and i'm going to open up the category page products const data loading and error i will say use fetch hook and i'm gonna send here my endpoint which is subcategory like that and i'm gonna be using filters categories field and it's a relationship it's not a text so we can use its title its category id and in our application we have a category id here we can use it so i will say categories and its id will be equal to this category id of course i will use backtick let's see and it's not going to be slash it's going to be question mark it's a query let's see and they are here hat and t-shirt so we can use them here i can delete those items and i'm gonna map through my new data and for each item i'm gonna call this input item container like that And instead of this label, I will say item dot attributes dot title. And they are here. And there's a warning here. We should use a unique key. I will say key item dot id. And let's change this value. It's going to be item dot id and i can do the same thing for this id and html4 okay right now we can choose any id here any subcategory id to do that i can create new use state here and it's gonna be selected subcategories and set selected subcategories and at the beginning it's going to be an empty array i will say use state empty array 
and whenever we change this input we are gonna set our state here let's do that i will come here and say on change and let's give a function handle change let's create this function const handle change of course we are gonna need event here and we are gonna try to take this value i will say const value event target and value and also we should check whether this checkbox is checked or not like that that because when we check an item we are gonna add this category id inside a list and when we uncheck we should delete this from our list this is why we are using this checked let's say is checked actually that because it's returning true or false and i'm gonna set my subcategories i will say if it's checked right here selected subcategories and add here our value if it's not we are gonna filter our selected subcategory item and it's gonna be not equal to value let's try i'll say console log selected subcategories as you can see it's empty i will choose here one one and two subcategory ids i will uncheck as you can see it's only one perfect it works so we can send this information to our list div list component here remember we are sending our category id maximum price and sort and also we will send these selected subcategories actually let's just say subcategories and that's all let's take it here maximum price and sort And we are gonna need this category id that because at the beginning we are gonna fetch all products according to this category id let's do that i will actually copy and paste here and we are gonna fetch all products i will delete here and we are gonna need our images and I will use filters I will say categories and its ID will be this category ID let's send this data right now I will say if loading show here this loading text if it's not show my data okay they are here perfect so how we are gonna filter our items when i choose this hat this subcategory we should see only this product so what i want to do is to add here another filter unfortunately we cannot send an array directly using strapi instead as you can see we are sending our item one by one using filters it tries to find multiple restaurants with those ids and sending them like that instead of using an array but anyway it's not a problem we can do that so what i will do is using a map here i'm gonna write here subcategories and map and for each item inside we are gonna create a new filter let's say filters of course it's gonna be and and subcategories let's check what was the name products okay with underscore it's correct and its id will be our item 
which is our subcategory ID. I will save. I will click here and as you can see only hat. If I click here, t-shirt. If I take this back, only t-shirt. Perfect. And other filters. For example, this price. If you remember, there is an option to use here. We are going to be using less than or equal to. It's going to be our maximum price. Let's do that. So I will come here and say one more filter. Price. And it will be less than or equal to our maximum price. Let's see. I'm going to change this. As you can see, zero. And they are here. OK. Of course, using this price range like that is not a good idea. It looks awesome, but if you have thousands of products, it's going to make your application really, really, really slower. What you can do? You can create here a button. You can change this size, this price. And when you click on that button, you can refetch your data. But if you have just 20, 30 products, using this like that is not a big deal. OK, one more filter here and it's going to be lowest or the highest price. To do that, we can use sort methods. It's here. Sort and pagination. As you can see, we will be using this sort query and we will be passing our field name here. In this case, it's going to be price. And also, we can send those parameters for the lowest or highest prices. Let's do that. I will say sort is going to be price. And I will write here my sort prop. If you remember, we set this state using those inputs. So we can use them here. Let's see. Lowest first, as you can see, it's here. Highest first, and that's all. Perfect. If you find this query a little bit confusing, you can also use any library. Let's check here. What was that library? I don't remember. OK, this library. Basically, it allows you to create filters object instead of writing them as a string. You can create an object and send it here. It's going to look much cleaner, but this version is also OK. It's not a big deal. And that's all for here. Let's fetch our single product. Using this ID, we can fetch our product. Let's do that. I will copy here. Let's delete this console log and I'm going to open my product page. Let's come here. We don't need those images. Use fetch hook. Let's delete here. It's going to be products and we are going to send here our product ID, but we don't have yet. Let's say const ID is going to be use params and our ID. Let's send this here. Instead of those images, I will say data attributes. By the way, don't forget writing here populate. Otherwise, it's not going to fetch your images. Dot image, its data attributes and URL. There is a typo. Let's give our question marks and use it here. And it's going to be image 2. Let's wrap this component actually. I will say if it's loading, right here loading. If it's not, 
write this left and right component. Of course, we should use here React Fragments, that because we have multiple items here, like that. Okay. So what about this main image? As you can see, we have selected image here. So instead of this number, I can write here image. And it's going to show us data attributes. And we are going to change here. It's going to be dynamic. To do that, I will just use an array. And it's going to be selected image. Of course, let's delete this question mark. So if it's image, it's going to show the first image. And when we click here, we are going to set this selected image to image2. And when I click here, it's going to be image back. Let's see. Of course, I forgot writing my upload URL. Let's copy and paste. And here. Perfect. If I click, as you can see, it's choosing the second image. Awesome. Let's change those information. I will copy here. It's going to be title. Price. Description. And that's all. Okay, so what I want to do is to add this product into my cart. To do that, we are going to be using React Redux. We are going to create a cart state, which includes those products. Of course, at the beginning, it's going to be empty. And when we add any item, we are going to pass it into that product's state. And also, we will create those plating and resetting functionalities Let's do that, actually. I'm going to come here, close everything, and I'm going to create a folder. And it will be Redux. So inside this Redux, we are going to have a cart reducer. And also, we are going to have a store here. Basically, we are going to store here our cart details. And using this reducer, we will be able to add any new products or delete or reset. To do that, I will open Redux Toolkit website. And in the documentation, let's see how we are going to install this. We will use this library. Of course, we need Redux first. I'm going to open my terminal. I will say yarn add Redux and Redux Toolkit. And after that, let's check what's inside. As you can see, we are going to create our storage like that. And we are going to pass here our cart reducer. And we are going to wrap our application using Redux Provider. It's going to come from React Redux. Yeah, I'm at React Redux. And we are going to send our storage using this provider. In this case, we can reach this card store in any component in our application. Let's do that. I will come here and open up my index.js and wrap my application using provider. And I'm going to pass here my store. And let's import this. And that's all. But what we are going to have inside this store? Basically, we are going to create here an initial state. And it's going to include our cart products. At the beginning, it's going to be empty, as I said. And we are going to create our actions to add new item, delete, or reset. Let's do that. As you can see, this is how we are creating our, our reducers. Let's copy this. And you are going to understand better right now. 
and I'm going to change its name. Let's say cart slice and its name will be cart. And as you can see, there is an initial state here. I'm going to delete this and I will say products. And at the beginning, it's going to be empty. And using these reducers, we can create our first action. And it's going to be add to cart. Basically, using those actions, we can change our state here. And in this action, we are going to add a new item. To take this item, we are going to need our action here. Basically, we are going to use this action in our products page. And we are going to dispatch this action by sending this product. And we are going to take that product and add it here. So I will say state dot push action and payload. But there's a problem here. If I add the same product again and again, it's going to keep adding those items like a different product. To prevent this, I'm going to write here a condition. Firstly, I'm going to check whether we have this item in our products. If we already have, we are just going to increase its quantity. If we don't have it, we are just going to push. Let's do that. I'll say const item. We are going to try to find it. We are going to check our state and products and find. I will say look each item and if item.id equals our payload id action.payload id it means we already have this item so let's write here a condition if there's an item take this item and increase its quantity I'm not going to say one, that because we can add multiple items here. So I will say action dot payload dot quantity. So if we have it inside our cart, when I add this, it's going to be five. And if it's not, we are just going to push it. By the way, guys. If you are using a plain Redux, you cannot push your items directly like that or you cannot change your object property like that. But Redux Toolkit is using a library called Immutable.js. This is how we can do it like that. And it's the one of the best feature of Redux Toolkit. It makes everything much easier. Okay, if you want to, you can watch my Redux Toolkit video, by the way. If you are not familiar and that's all for this action let's create the second one and it's gonna be remove item again we are gonna take an action and we are gonna send a product id as a payload for example when i click on this button we are gonna send this product id as a payload action and we are gonna filter our products Let's do that. I'll say state dot products and it's going to equal state dot products dot filter and I'm going to check each item and item dot id will be not equal to action dot payload. Basically, we are going to delete this item. And last one reset cart basically state dot products will be empty again so we don't need any action payload okay right now i can send here my actions add to cart remove item and reset cart and remember our slice name is cart slice and we are going to return our reducer here. So we can use it in our store. So if I say cart equals cart reducer, in this case, we can reach this products array everywhere in our application. Let's try. 
I'm going to open the card component and right now instead of this data we are going to fetch our store to do that we are going to be using use selector hook I will say const products which is our state and I will say use selector hook and we will take the state the common state this is our state if I say state.cart we will be able to reach our reducer and if I say cart.products I will be able to reach this data so I will say state.cart.products let's import this use selector from React Redux so I can use it here as you can see it's empty and let's open up product page and try to add item into our cart okay I'm gonna write here I'll click methods and here I'm gonna dispatch my action to do that we are gonna be using use dispatch hook I will say const dispatch use dispatch it will come from react redux and using this function I can dispatch my action which action I will dispatch is gonna be add to cart let's import and remember we are sending action payload and it's gonna be our product information ID will be data.id title description I will send image let's send the first image data attributes dot URL and finally its price and one more thing we will send and it's gonna be this quantity we can send it directly like that that because we have use state here we are changing it and let's see I hope everything is okay I'm gonna open up my console and here I will choose Redux extension if you don't have it I highly recommend you to install I will click here there is something wrong I said state.push is gonna be state dot products push and as you can see we just called this action and right now our product has changed and we have an item right now let's see as you can see it's here perfect of course we cannot see our image because we don't have process EMV like that perfect if I add more item as you can see it didn't add our item back instead it just increased its quantity it's not one anymore it's five of course we didn't write it here let's change it's gonna be item quantity and here okay what else I can do I can calculate this item I will say const total price at the beginning is gonna be zero and I'm gonna map through my products and I'm gonna increase this total number and it's gonna be item dot quantity multiplied by its price and finally I'm gonna return this total but if you remember we are using a decimal here to prevent any conflict if you do that you can see many characters after the dot to prevent this I'll just come here and say to fixed it's gonna be only two number after dot let's use it here
let's add to cart okay it's not showing something is wrong i gave here exactly the same name let's say total price and it's going to be a function of course and like that as you can see after dot it shows two numbers and let's add other product here this one okay awesome so what i want to do is when i click on this button i want to call the delete method let's come here and find our icon it's here i will say on click event and i will say dispatch and remove item and we are going to send our item dot id of course we don't have dispatch let's do that i will just copy and paste from here okay let's see i will click and it's gone and you can see our action here let's do the same thing for this reset cart I can copy here and paste and it's gonna be reset cart and we are not gonna send any payload let's do that I will click and perfect it works as we expected by the way I can increase this number let's copy this and open up navbar I will import and I will say products dot length okay one item if I add one more item like that it's not gonna increase because it's exactly the same product if I add this one and as you can see it's two okay awesome so we have finished the main part of our application we can fetch data we can add them to our cart by the way i forgot to persist my items if i refresh the page as you can see it removes all those products to prevent this we are going to be using redux persist library let's import this and as you can see we are gonna make some changes in our store we are gonna give some configuration here and using this configuration we are gonna create a new reducer new persistent reducer and we are gonna store this in our storage let's do that i will copy here and let's paste like that i want to leave this cart reducer let's delete this root reducer and app we don't need them we are gonna wrap our app using index.js and we don't have any other reducer we can drag the pass here our cart reducer and we are gonna be using this in our index file i will say export and let's open up index file and i'm gonna pass this process gate and wrap my application using this gate and it's gonna load our previous data we can write here any component i will just say loading and persistor will be the persistor that we have exported let's see it says we couldn't export our storage okay i will say export store there is a problem here and it says there is no products that because we are not sending our cart here i will say cart is gonna be persisted reducer right now we have our cart let's see i'm gonna add this product i will refresh the page and as you can see it's still here also i can play item reset card it works perfectly okay 
Right now, only thing we should do is using Stripe payment. Let's open up stripe.com and its documentation. And I'm going to click here, my dashboard. Of course, you have to be logged in first. If you don't have any account, just create. And after that, you are going to see this page. As you can see, there is a secret key here. We are going to use this key in our backend API to make payments. But first, let's come here and create one more collection here. And it's going to be order. And it's going to include a customer email. And we will add here Stripe ID. After a successful payment, we are going to store its ID here. Let's say long text in any case. And what else we can add? You can add whatever you want. You can add your product ID, for example. Or directly you can add products. Let's do that, actually. Another field, and I'm going to choose here. JSON format. So we can send our product title description or whatever we want. And its name will be products. Okay, I will save. And we are ready. Let's open up this documentation here. And I'm going to search for pre-built checkout page. As you can see, we are going to use something like that. When I click on this button, it's going to redirect us to this page and we will be able to enter our information and, and make our payment. To do that, we are going to need a backend server that because we have to validate our payment, we cannot do this using only front end. It should be secure. So I'm going to choose here, Node.js, and it shows here an express application, but we already have a backend server, so how we are going to use it? Basically, we are going to be using our Strapi API, and if you look at this source folder, you are going to see this API section, and inside we have our table names, and inside them we have controllers, routes, services, it works like an express server, so if we want to make any complex operation, we can use its controllers and we can write additional functions, like what we are going to do right now. Let's open up controllers. And here can be a little bit confusing that because normally we are making our CRUD operations here, but the payment operation is really important. We have to do this in our backend server, so basically first, we are going to make a Stripe payment using this session. By the way, it's too big. We are going to create Stripe session and we are going to send our items, their prices, quantities, whatever we want, also user information. And after that, if everything is OK, we are going to take this session ID and products and add them into our order table here. Let's do that. Firstly, I'm going to open up this EMV file and I'll say Stripe key and just copy your secret key here and paste like that. And I can call this Stripe function right now. Let's see what we have. As you can see, Stripe requires Stripe. Of course, we have to install this first. I'm going to open up new terminal here. CD API yarn add Stripe. And after that, we are going to call this Stripe function. There is our order here. I will close everything here, actually. Okay. Let's paste it here. And it's going to be process env and stripe key. And as you can see, there is a core controller here, which handles our CRUD operations. But 
I want to create here one more function. So whenever we make request, it's going to call this function also. We are going to take strapi here. And I will say async function because we are going to add a new data to our DB. Create context. Of course, we should return this like that. And I'm going to take my user information first. I'll say const user email and our products. You can take whatever you want, user address, any information. But remember, we have this email and product, and we are going to add this Stripe ID later. And it's going to come from request and body. If you are familiar with Express Server, you already know. And after that, I will create here a try catch block and we will make our payment. If there is an error, we are going to send it as a response. I will say context response and the status is going to be 500 server error. And we can send our error. Okay, so let's create here a Stripe session. We are going to be using Stripe and checkout and create a session. Let's check here. As you can see, we are creating a session. Session mode will be payment. And if it's successful, we can send our user any page. In this case, it's going to be our local host and 3000 and you can create here any success page. But I want to just use my home page. Maybe we can write any query here. Let's open up our EMV file and I will say client URL. And it's going to be HTTP localhost 3000. Let's use it. Process dot env our url and if it's successful we are gonna see this query here is gonna be true if it's not it's gonna be false okay and what does as you can see we need a line item array here which includes our price quantity and also we can send our product data we are going to need that data that because when we click here as you can see it shows our product name so what i want to do is to create here line items i will say 08 and i'm going to be using promise all that because we have more than one product and for each product that we sent, we are going to try to find the product in our DB. Of course, you can directly write here these products and their prices, their names. But it's not a good idea that because user can change this price. Never ever use a client side price. You have to find the item in your DB first and after check its properties. So I will say await strapi and service. I will say API product and product just like here. And which request we will make is going to be find one. It's just like MongoDB. And I will pass here my product ID. I said await is going to be async. And I will move this here, of course, like that. And we are going to be returning a function. Basically, for each item that comes from front end, we are going to search for that item in our back end. Let's say const item equals await and this finding operation. And after finding our item, we can use its price its name, its price, whatever. So I will return 
a price data. Let's see here. As you can see, inside this price data, we can send any currency, we can send our product information like their names, we can send our price like that. And after this price data, we can send our quantity and many things here. Stripe is a really complex API. It's not hard. It's a great documentation here, but it has many features. So if you are struggling to understand here, don't worry, it's totally normal. Just use this documentation and get help when you need. Okay. I will say price data. I will send currency. It's going to be USD. I'm going to send my product data. For example, its name. It's going to be item.title. Remember, we are storing this like that. And uh, we can send unit amount and it's going to be item dot price multiplied by a hundred. You have to write here a hundred that because by default Stripe take your amount as a cent. So you have to multiply this by a hundred. And after that, we can send the quantity. And it's going to come from our item dot quantity. Okay. By the way, I said product is going to be item, of course. Let me shrink this and okay. It looks okay. We can send these line items right now. It's going to be line items and line items. And we can ask for any shipping address that because we are sending some clothes, I will say shipping address collection and we can give here any allowed countries so if you are not sending your products worldwide just write here the country code like us or canada whatever you want and finally i'm gonna send here the payment method And we are going to accept payments using only credit card. And also we can send here if everything is OK. Finally, we can write this information to our database. So I will say await stroppy. I'll say service. I will do exactly the same thing. But this time it's not going to be find one. Instead, we are going to create a new item. I will say API order. And create and I'm gonna send a data here and it's gonna be the products and what was the name stripe ID actually we can delete this email if we have this stripe ID we are gonna already see all user information in our stripe dashboard we don't need that we can just check the stripe ID and according to this ID we can check our orders here so we don't need this email. We will just send products. And Stripe ID is going to be this session and its ID. And finally, if everything is OK, if there is no error, we are going to return a response. And it's going to be Stripe session and session. I hope everything is okay. Let's check our card component. And for this button, I will say on click method, handle payment. I will create this function. And I will make a request here. I will say catch. If there is any error, you can show it in the card component or just console log. And it's going to be an async function. So let's see how we are going to use our Stripe method here. Okay, it's here. Okay, this was our 
backend and for the front end we are using react let's see okay it's not here let's search for react application so we are gonna need those libraries first let's copy and paste them I'm gonna open the client side yarn add stripe and after that we are gonna load our stripe provider and after that we are gonna be using our public key remember it's here this publishable key and finally we are gonna make backend server request and if everything is okay we are gonna go to stripe payment page actually let's call this here and i'm gonna change this publishable key you can share this anywhere it's not a secret key don't worry about this and right now i can call this promise here i'll say await stripe promise i can create here stripe and after that i'm gonna make my request i'll say const response we are going to be using axios make request function but this time it's going to be a post method our endpoint and remember we are sending our products if you want to you can create here a form input and send the customer information like mail or shipping address but we don't need that as i said we are going to be using stripe dashboard we don't need to store them okay and after this i'm going to call stripe and redirect to checkout page and we should provide here a session id and it's going to come from our backend server data and what we are sending let's remember we are sending this stripe session and we are going to take its id and if everything is okay it's going to redirect us to our success page let's see i will click oh that because in our application remember we have a api settings here by the way there is a problem here Oh, I used the same name. Let's say product using this product and its ID. We are going to find our item and using this item. Remember, it comes from our DB. OK, we are using this item. Let's start. I'm going to open settings, API tokens and if you remember we are using a custom token type so i have to come here and give a create permission i will save let's try it says it cannot find one i forgot here the second column and let's check here okay it's correct and let's check one more time if everything is okay or not okay i didn't use await here stripe checkout and sessions order and i will click and it redirect us to stripe page as you can see our product title its quantity its price and the total price as you can see there's an email section here shipping address without them we cannot make this payment let's write here a fake data and test our application and a shipping address here
address here. Okay, for this information, let me make this bigger. You should write here 42s and any future date like that and any three numbers. I will pay. As you can see, it's successful and it redirects us to our success page. As I said, you can create any component here and let's check our dashboard here. And as you can see, the price is immediately here. Of course, I'm using different currency, but our payout is here. Perfect. Of course, it's a test data. We didn't send or take any money, but in the real world project, it works like that. Okay, awesome. Let's check our API here. Order, and as you can see, we have Stripe ID that we can check in our dashboard. And we can see what the customer actually ordered. And that's pretty all. So what I want to do is to deploy this application into Hostinger Premium Hosting and deploy this Strapi application into our backend server. Let's close our applications. And for the React application, I will just say npm run build and it's gonna create our application's static files in this folder. As you can see, it's ready. We have our images, JavaScript and CSS files and index.html here. So I want to take all of those folders and files and move into my hosting server. As you remember, I mentioned this file manager. I will click here. And there's a public HTML here. I will click and this is our default page. Let's check our website. As you can see, this is the default page. I will just delete this and I'm gonna drag and drop my folders and files. And it's ready. Let's check. And it's here. Of course, we are not connected to our backend server. We are gonna change our EMV file later. That because we don't have backend URL yet. But when we create our server, we are gonna write it here. But basically, this is how we are creating static web applications. So what about our backend server? Let's come here and check our VPS here. So let me show you how you can install Ubuntu in your VPS server. I've done this before to test my account, but I will do everything from scratch. I'm gonna delete everything and install back. So what I want to do is to choose this operating system. And here you can choose any control panel like CentOS, Cyber Panel Direct Admin or Plask, but I recommend you to use a plain operating system. Only CentOS or only Ubuntu. That because we are gonna install Nginx for our servers and we are gonna do everything manually. So I will come here and choose Ubuntu, the latest version. And if you haven't installed before, it's gonna write here, install the operating system. If you have already created, and if you want to change your operating system, just click here. So it's gonna delete everything and install back. As you can see, it's gonna take a while, and after that, we are gonna deploy our application. And during this process, let me show you which documentation we are gonna follow. It's in our GitHub repository. Just find my repository, it's gonna be in the description below. And find this branch, man deployment. And it includes everything you need to know about VPS servers. 
You can deploy your React applications, any Node.js application like Strapi, Express Server, whatever you want. And if you didn't watch my VPS deployment video, I highly recommend you to watch it because I'm not gonna explain everything from scratch. In that video, I've explained how to create VPS server and in this video, I'm just gonna follow this documentation. I will just make some copy pastes. Let's see. Okay, it's almost ready. The first step is to connect our VPS server. To do that, I'm gonna go to Overview. And as you can see, our VPS server is running. I will click here and this is our dedicated IP address. If I try to reach this address, as you can see, it says we are using Ubuntu and Apache server. So this address will be our backend server's address. Of course, you can use any domain instead of this IP address, but we don't need it yet. Using this address is totally okay. If you are using Mac or Linux, only thing you should do is using your terminal. If you don't have, if you are using Windows, you have to use this software to connect to your VPS server. As I said, you can watch my previous video about VPS server. I used Windows operating system in that video, but right now I'm gonna be using my Mac. So I'm gonna open my terminal. Okay, the first thing I should do is to create an SSH key. I'm gonna create this key. You can give any password here or you can leave just empty, doesn't matter. And it generated a key. Right now I'm gonna copy my key using this code. And I'm gonna open Hostinger panel. And here I'm gonna choose settings and SSH keys. I'm gonna add, you can give any name, doesn't matter and I will paste my key. As you can see, it's here. After adding, we are ready to start. Let's clear here. And after that, I'm gonna say SSH root and my IP address here. SSH root and IP address. I will say yes. And right now we are into our VPS server. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to delete this Apache server that because we are gonna be using Nginx server. Let's do that. Firstly, I'm gonna stop my Apache server I will disable and finally after disabling I will just remove it like that I will say yes and I want to delete all Apache dependencies using this code and after that I'm gonna update my Ubuntu server everything will be up to date. It's gonna take a while and as you can see there's a folder here and this folder is where we deploy our applications. Let's open up. I will say cd var and www. If I say ls as you can see there is a file here. Basically this is the home page of our VPS server. But we don't need this anymore. We are not gonna show anything here. So I will just remove it. And after that we can create our Nginx server. The reason that we are using Nginx server because our backend server is using different port number. If you remember it was localhost and this port number, but we are not gonna use it in our server. 
like that. It's not a secure way to connect your API. Basically using Nginx server, we are going to create a gate. So even if we write here a plain domain name or IP address, we will be able to reach our applications. We should create a firewall. I will enable. And this is going to be our security rule. OK. And those folders are where we are going to write our server configurations. As I said, writing those server configurations, we will be able to reach any port number using any subdomain or any subfolder. This configuration is the most important part of Nginx. So let's delete those default configurations. And right now we can create our own configuration. I will copy here. As you can see, it says Netflix that because in that tutorial, I've just deployed a full stack Netflix application. But in our case, we can change here. It can be API or whatever you want. Let's say API. This is going to be our location where you want to see our application in this example. It was a React application and it uses the main URL. And for example, for the backend server, as you can see, its location is API. So basically, you can use any subfolder or subdomain. In my case, I want to use just the main URL. Let's copy here and paste. And I'm going to change here. We don't need any root file. We are not running any index file. I can delete them or here. But I want to write here a proxy pass. And this is going to be our admin panel address, localhost 13 and 37. We are using this address that because by default, Strapi using this. I can write HTTP also. like that so i'm gonna save this file Control s and Control x and right now i can upload my files to do that i'm gonna create a new directory here it's gonna be api and in this directory we are gonna create a strapi app of course to run this application we are gonna need node.js by the way I forgot this line. We have created this file, but we don't have enabled sites. And this code takes everything inside this file and pastes here. So I'm going to paste. Oops, it's going to be, of course, API. OK, let's clear here, actually. And as you can see, I've just tested here any index HTML file, but we don't need that. I just want to install my Strapi application and using a Node.js, we are going to run our application. Let's install this Node.js. And I'm going to install npm. And right now, we can create a Strapi app. To do that, you can install your existing application or you can create a new one. But remember, if you are using any database different than SQLite database, you have to install it to your VPS server first. So I want to create my Strapi app from scratch. I'm going to copy here and paste. And I'm going to install everything in this folder. Let's quick start. By the way, if you already have an application in your GitHub repository, firstly, you can install Git and clone your project into your VPS server. After that, you can install libraries using npm install. Okay, it's ready. 
but it's not our local server, so we are not gonna run this right now. I want to make some changes first. I want to change some configuration in my server.js. Let's open up config folder. And let's see. Okay, server.js is here. I will say nano server.js. And I'm gonna write here my new URL. I will say URL and let's check our IP address and I'm gonna pass it here. Basically it's gonna be our home page. I will save and exit and right now let's check the documentation. There's a deployment section here Firstly, we should build our application, otherwise we won't be able to see the admin panel. I'm gonna come back. It's gonna take a while. And after that, we are gonna start our application. But before, I want to reset my Nginx, that because, as you can see, it shows 404 not found. So I'm gonna reset my Nginx and let's check if everything is okay or not. Okay, it's active and it's running perfectly. And let's run our app. Production mode, npm and start. But if you do that, of course, you won't be able to create any table that because it's a production mode but I just wanted to show you. Okay, it's ready, let's check. I will refresh this page. And as you can see, our server is ready. Let's open up admin panel. Right now I can create any user here. And it's ready. Let's check. As you can see, in this mode, we cannot create any table. We can only create a new entry. The reason that we cannot create any collection here that because after creation, it has to reset our server. And in production mode, you cannot reset your server whenever you want. So if I stop my server, that's clear here and I will say npm run develop let's refresh and right now as you can see I'm able to create any collection here let's actually create them quickly Okay guys, I created my tables and a test product. Right now I can create my token. Find, find one. Create. And find. Let's save. Of course, we need a duration, it's gonna be unlimited. And this is our API token. Let's copy this and change my API token. And the API URL will be like that. And upload to URL. Okay. Right now I can run my application and move them here. Right now I can run my server. Let's see. 
I will refresh. And right now our image is here. Okay, awesome. So that's all guys. I hope you liked it. If you learned something new today, please like the video. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. And don't forget to follow Lamadev social media accounts. You can support Lamadev by using the link in the description below or by joining the channel. I hope I will see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.